On the podcast today, we are going to dissect chapter 26 of the Tao Te Ching, which makes up the 26th episode of the 81 Meditations on the Tao Te Ching. And as usual, Guyang will read Jia Fu Feng and Jane English's translation, and I will read Derek Lin's translation. The heavy is the root of the light. The steel is the master of unrest. Therefore the wise, traveling all day, do not lose sight of their baggage. Though there are beautiful things to be seen, they remain unattached and calm. Why should the Lord of 10,000 chariots act lightly in public? To be light is to lose our root. To be restless is to lose control. Heaviness is the root of lightness. Quietness is the master of restlessness. Therefore the sages travel an entire day without leaving heavy supplies. Even though there are luxurious sights, they are composed and transcend beyond. How can the lords of 10,000 chariots apply themselves lightly to the world? To be light is to lose one's root. To be restless is to lose one's mastery. So this chapter is about the power of heaviness and how a sage is in the world but not of it. Yes. And heavy here, we can relate a little bit to weight and also not just in the physical sense, but also in the psychological sense and the spiritual sense. This whole chapter is about how we should emulate this age, how it's a lesson for us about the power of heaviness and not about being light and frivolous and not, not that we're talking about being overly serious here, but being more so being grounded mm. in your existence. Yes, yeah, so in earlier chapter, chapter 25, we talked about the earth, earth in relation to Tao, the way, and the earth being like ground, the soil, like you said, grounded. The weight of the earth, weight of the ground is the heaviest of the any heavy objects because that's the what carries the continent, that's what carries the ocean. So here meaning that weight and heaviness as in like that earth mm. like having that quality that what earth has like carrying that heavy weight but not as in weight as like heavy responsibility or burden per se it's more so like to be grounded like you mentioned mm. and how you are not moved by any kind of uh, distractions any um floating around ideas which may um, push you to a certain direction but not get moved by any of that but you're just so solidly grounded to your own self yeah there's an image in buddhism of the bumi spasha mudra where gautama the buddha is touching the earth yep. with his hand and this represents not being moved by worldliness not being moved by the distractions and the superficiality of the world itself of culture of society and so forth and so on and so buddha is unmoved there so the sage is unmoved right like according to this chapter and in some sense the sage in this chapter is unattached to the world and that's the reason that the sage can actually lead correctly because they are unattached to the things that ordinary people attach to yes superficial things that most people attach to yes and the sage as we've spoke about in numerous chapters before because they are in alignment with simplicity they're not attached to the superficiality of the mm. world and they lead people efficaciously yes the sage come from that uh, place where nothing is attached really so unmoved, unattached, and always calm and serene. And here it says, like, do not lose the sight of their baggage, like talking about the baggage. And here we're talking about, like, the as a leader, or a lord of a kingdom. And when it says, do not lose sight of their baggage, here baggage can be also mean, um, yeah, not losing that uh, weight as a sage, as a lord, but also as in kind of a responsibility as a leader should mm -hmm. carry. Mm -hmm. And taking as a kind of a 
role to play in here, to carry the baggage, uh, to be responsible, not to be ungrounded, always grounded and uh, find, uh, be one with the root and always try to keep the trust of the people as a leader. So uh, though there are beautiful things to be seen, so we can say though there are many things to be distracted by, right? But they remain unattached and calm. Yep. Again, their groundedness. Yes. And the tree is a common metaphor in Taoism, right? Like a tree with deep roots. So if you look at it, any sort of tree that has really deep roots, it's unmoved by what's happening in the external world yeah. because it's completely grounded in themselves. And this is a point in the chapter because you're not moved by a lot of these things. You are grounded in yourself. And because you are grounded in yourself and you have a clear perception of the world and what is needed for the world, that's what actually, that's actually where the responsibility comes from mm. because you're grounded. You sort of, you can own that responsibility yes. as opposed to being someone who has small roots, not very grounded and are easily blown over. Those sorts of people probably shouldn't have a lot of responsibility mm. as you were mentioning as in relation to a leader in this chapter, that's definitely an aspect of or a quality that leaders should have deep roots being grounded. Not that that's, a situation in the modern day that we see often with a lot of leaders around the world, but that's the ideal leader, someone who has those deep roots and, and understands what is best for a lot of people. And, and you know, as you mentioned, the 10,000 chariots, right? Someone who has that sort of a general or a, a, a lord in this sense who has the responsibility of managing the 10,000 chariots. And if you're at that stage, then... You know, you you have a very heightened sense of groundedness, yes, and a sense of understanding about who you truly are as mm. well. Yes, yeah, in ancient China, they uh, usually measure the size of the king, size of the kingdom, how big the kingdom is, how big a uh, nation is, to be judged by um, how many chariots did um, Lord actually had owned. So, well, ten thousand chariots. The, was regarded as a quite a large size of a kingdom, mm. so it's just a kind of a bit of a metaphor here, isn't it? Like, so why should the lord of a ten thousand chariots act lightly in mm. public? So, yep. um, the the lord with the ten thousand chariots do not act lightly in public. No, mm. they don't, and that's b because they have mastery over themselves, mm. and it, it's spoken a lot about in this chapter about Derek mentions in the second line Qu quietness is the master of restlessness yeah. and we often see most people in the world are very restless these days due to a lot of excessive technology and distractions and entertainment but you can you cannot be a master of your own domain yeah. or a master of your own being if you are blown here or there by restlessness. Yes. And so that would be like being blown around here or here and there by the 10,000 chariots. Yes. You're concerned about these 10,000 chariots going here and there and everywhere, mm. and you don't have a bigger picture of the 10,000 chariots of what is needed in that moment in time. Yes. In your life. Yes. And to cult to cultivate that root, have that kind of responsibility in the weight uh, to a sage or a leader or a lord and it could be again it's just uh, each individual each one of us in our own life right mm. so I, I when you look around like even the people that you know around you like some people are somewhat like innately seem to be innately responsible in what they do and innately responsible to other people like care more they care more to other people they care more about what they're doing right and some people are not mm. <laughs> so is that root something that so we can cultivate definitely it's something we can cultivate and if we look at the teachings of Taoism, and if we look at the teachings of Manchus, uh, we're all born innately good we're all born with all of those qualities. Mm. But then the socialization process steps in. Yeah. 
So uh, most of us don't have the same deck of cards that are dealt for us in, yeah. in life. And a lot of us have to deal with certain situations that say more privileged people with wealth and that have to. And, but they also have their problems to overcome. Don't get me wrong. And that doesn't also make them be responsible in that. Like it's, it's life can facilitate that. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't facilitate it for a lot of, uh, for some people, but also people neglect their responsibility as, 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 as it alludes, alludes to in this chapter, because, you know, if we allow restlessness to take over ourselves, then we, because we are restless, we're blown here and there. And that happens because of the cultures that we're in and the socialization process and situation that we, we are brought into. Now, it's your responsibility as an individual to overcome that. And the problem in our world is a lot of people don't want to assume that responsibility. They just want to continue to be blown here and there. They'll pick up their phone and just scroll mindlessly for hours because they think that that's actually not doing anything to them, mm. but it's having a deep psychological effect on them, which is training them to be restless. It's training them to be agitated. And so they're easily blown here or there. That's why most of those people who are scrolling, say the social media feeds, if you say something to them, they're easily agitated or they, they lean into anger and frustration a lot easier than just being calm and serene. We only have to look on the YouTube comments, right? Like you say one thing and if and p people get so triggered by just like one word, for example, yes. and then they will spew all sorts of vile all over you. But it's because they are restless. They can't watch their mind. They don't have the self-examination that a sage has who have poise and composure to see that oh, there's no need to act. That's just uh, the socialization process, the conditioning I've gone through that is in friction with whatever the other person is saying. So we can all have that responsibility some of us are trained to assume that we don't have that responsibility. And then there's those of us who just don't want to assume that responsibility. Mm. You know, so it's, there's two parts to that. So like even making a small decision, like uh, turning off um, social media platforms, turn off the phone and just leave it, let it sleep and, pick up a book or go out for a, take a walk. These small decisions actually helps help you to grow the root, grow it, that um, responsibility. Yeah. Lots of says in this one, quietness is the master of restlessness. Mm. Choosing quietness over restlessness. Right. So choosing, like you said, maybe read a book, maybe meditate, go for a long stroll in nature choosing the things that are fundamentally healthy for you. Mm -hmm. And there's an emphasis in this chapter how the sage sticks to those fundamental essentials where, especially in the modern day, we're moving away from those fundamental essentials. Why would I go for a walk in nature where I can just sit on the couch all day and scroll the social media feed mm -hmm. and watch YouTube and listen to a million podcasts and your mind is running here and there. You're constantly restless. Whereas if you choose quiet, then that is a step in the right direction. You're actually mm. nourishing yourself yes. and you actually are grounding yourself. Whereas when you're running after this and that, you, are, you aren't grounding yourself. You're the tree with small roots that's being blown here and there like a, like a palm tree yes. about to be blown away in a cyclone. Or you can be a big banyan tree, you know, yes. with deep roots and hard to push over and those uh big banyan trees stay there forever yeah it was there before us and it will be there after exactly. us exactly exactly there is that um longevity there is that longevity mm. and that's also a, a part of this chapter too right the longevity metaphor is that mm. if you have those strong roots you won't just lead people for a short period of time, you'll be there for a long, longer period of time because people who are usually easily blown here or there usually come across a lot of pitfalls in their life and a lot of things that are negative to their health and negative to their psychology. 
where a sage knows firmly who they are, are grounded in themselves. And so they're not psychologically handicapped. Yes. I think uh, once we understand the Lao Tzu's point, Lao Tzu's lesson um, that he's trying to deliver to people through his book, Tao Te Ching, is that then what really matters is to bring that to action, bring that to actual practice. Once we understand that that uh, lesson, then it'll be useless if we don't take it in action, if we don't practice, mm. right? Yeah. That, uh, that is to, again, making those uh, small um, decisions and make our life um, more simple. Yeah. Realize that you're living a life and life is a gift, so don't take it for granted. That's the point of this chapter. Life's a gift, and we often take it for granted because we don't sort of grab ourselves by the horns. I'm not talking about grabbing life by the horns, grabbing ourselves by the horns and controlling ourselves in that sense. Not contr- not in the sense of over-control, but uh, contr- understanding ourselves, mm. you know, like... Examining who you are, yeah. practicing mindful awareness, having a serious purpose or intent for something that you do in your life, mm. not being flimsy about it, and not not overly serious here, yeah. but like the, a grounded seriousness as opposed to being overly serious like we see in the world. I think it's a, a, a little bit of a contemplation is what we need. A little bit of contemplation about our life that we live every day and just uh, having a bit of a quiet time to reflect on things and having those moments, I think it makes a big difference. Definitely does. And that's why we ought to practice that quietness because if we don't, then... The temptations of the world will consume you. It's just a fact of the matter. In this chapter, that they used the metaphor of travel for the sage, right? Or for, or for Lao Tzu. And the sage is traveling, say if we're traveling on a train and you see all these beautiful sights as you go and then your head's turning here and there, where the sage is quietly composed and sees it all as one panorama. It's not... There's no detail to it. There's nothing that is more beautiful or more ugly than anything else. And that's a point of doubt to Ching, right? Like where there's beauty, there's ugliness. And where there's ugliness, there's beauty. Where the sage has a state of equanimity, where these fluctuations of reality are kind of resolved into one unified mutuality. Mm. And that's the point here that, you know, you can have... You have seriousness and you, uh, you have restlessness and you have quiet, right? You have two opposite realms of the pendulum. But if you remain in quiet or silence, when restlessness comes or the restlessness of the world, it doesn't consume you. Mm-hmm. Likewise with the travel. When you're traveling and you see all these beautiful things or what you assume are beautiful because they might be ugly to someone else, yeah. then you're not distracted by those. And that's the guidance in this chapter is how can we live our life with not being distracted by the changing panorama of life, of mm. reality itself. Yeah, not to give every attention that you what with what you see, right? Like, yeah. oh, look at that, look at that. Then yeah. next minute you're all over the place. Your mind is jumping all over the place. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You go down one rabbit hole after another and... That's actually how social media is designed, right? Like it's designed for you to jump down one rabbit hole after another. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that video. YouTube's a good example, right? Oh, look at that video. Look at that video. And next minute, 10 hours has disappeared from following yep. your temptations and, and the social media companies preying on you know, your own psychological sensibilities and behavior. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we become so anxious about things, isn't it? Because that the, the, the circle of thoughts never stops. No. It's just only expanding, right? It uh, doesn't doesn't go away. So thought creates another thought, and one after the other, and you're just going to never stop. And 
yeah, if we don't give a stop to it, then you become even more anxious, more restless. Yeah. And that's what this chapter is in part about. It's about having that unattached, unattached mentality. Yeah. And choosing not to engage in all of that worldly distraction. And that's maybe easier said than done for a lot of us. But that the, in, in the end of the day, this ch- chapter is sort of saying to you are, you, are you willing to finish it off or not? Mm. Or are you going to keep going down the life of distraction and temptation? Or are you going to rein back the reins of the chariot, so to speak, so that you can live a life of simplicity, quiet and humility? There's always a choice, right? Because the choice in this world is restless. I mean, the opposite choice in this world is restlessness, uh, noise, distraction, and arrogance, yeah. as opposed to humility. Mm. Yeah, bring bring all that um, again, bringing that power back to yourself instead of giving so much attention to all these distractions that you get distracted by. Yeah. Right? having that power back and that can ground ground yourself and stay unattached, unmoved. That's the power of heaviness, isn't it? And that's what this chapter is all about. Yes. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time.